Welcome back, welcome back, guys, to episode two of Last Frame. I am Christina, and these are my two good friends. Hello, this is Dave, and I'm two back from Hell Descent Forums. Hello, this is Roger. I'm yeah. from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you're from, <laughs> just sort of there. <laughs> you're from you're from nowhere, Roger. I'm from nowhere. <laughs> I draw my own maps. Uh, are, you say, are you saying that there was a Roger here, but he's gone now? Yeah, there oh, was a Roger, but he's gone now. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, um, what we will be talking about today is, real quick, we are going to recap E3, since that was a pretty exciting time for gamers, which is now past, but we are still going to talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we will also cover State of Decay, which is a new Yay. zombie sandbox game released by Undead Labs. Anyway, we'll get back to that. Uh, we will also be talking a little bit about Found footage movies. Wow. That's a little special right there. Uh, then the usual, we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing, what's going on with us, and last but definitely not least, we will be talking about The Last of Us. And that was kind of not a pun intended, but whatever. But it <laughs> worked that way. Christina, Christina, did you just say that um, State of Decay was developed by... Under labs. No, I said undead labs. <laughs> undead labs. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. If I said that, I apologize. Yeah, oh, you guys, you guys noticed that there were zombies wearing t-shirts with the with the with the logo. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it, yeah, it's funny yeah I think we noticed a couple actually. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's let's get let's get right on with this and let's just talk about E3 um, okay so yeah. as we know E3 kicked off slightly earlier than usual I think it kicked off on Monday this week rather than um, they normally start on the Tuesday but it started off on a Monday um, obviously the big the big thing is going to be the the Microsoft Sony shindig that's going on oh, um, yeah. how do you guys see that playing out well uh, sorry that I just started talking but that's I, fine. like uh, well, I think that I'm I'm was never a Sony fanboy or a Microsoft fanboy because I like games. Console for me is just a detail. Which I is want... what it should be. Yeah, I it should never say... be about the console, Roger. Should it? It should and always then... be about the games. And then, well, uh, for now, it seems that the PS4 is the one, you know, being a console game because now the Microsoft does they do they do not know what they want to do with the Xbox. You know, if it's a game console, if it's a TV, whatever, you know, and then they just they not want, off, they, they want you know, to pack it with a lot of stuff and gamers just want to focus on gaming, but they're packing it with so much other stuff. And, yeah. and yeah. The, the funny thing for me is that they're doing what uh, Sony did in the early beginning of PS3. There was like, uh, OK, it's very expensive, but it's be, it's a PlayStation. Everybody's going to buy it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. And now you can't do that. Uh, Sony, you know, got slapped when they did that. But Sony learned. So now you know, the, the the PlayStation Plus is really nice to have. It's something that, you know, you got some nice content. You got, like, free stuff and, and everything. And the PS4 is, is showing that he's going to support gamers. It's not like just... Because if we only talk about the user games policy, it's ridiculous. Perfect example right there of why it's PS4 ridiculous. is the advantage. Yeah, and just... then they just did the, like, the nice joke, oh, this is how you share games <laughs> on that was the PS4. Epic. Yeah, that was <laughs> oh, epic. yeah. That was so epic. That's like and... someone coming up to the Microsoft chief executive and slapping him with a fish. Yeah. Or <laughs> with a, yeah. a really wet fish. A really wet fish. A really, really wet, smelly fish. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then from, the, from Tanuka Lake. Oh <laughs> God! And then is the the always online thing, which is they they like they being like really really obnoxious to the to to the gamers. It's like, oh you don't you you can't rely on your internet connection. I'm sorry. Well, stick with the Xbox 360. Stick with the 360. Yeah. What the, yeah. What that, the, what the freak? I've seen that video. You know, it's like okay. So the best way to promote your product is offending. <laughs> the customers 
Is that it? Yeah. But I'm, also, how stupid... Sorry for uh, interrupting. I just have to say this. How stupid are they? If they say, oh, well, if you don't have internet, you know, just stick with the 360. People aren't going to do that. They're going to they're gonna stick to the PS4. I mean, yeah. who's going to support Microsoft after making a stupid statement like that? That was really not good for them, I got to tell you. I because, think that's what may have killed them. Because the, 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 the things that when I had a PS3 and it was wireless, it was always online because I had it online at the moment. But... If I didn't have any internet connection, I would be able to play games. Totally screwed, Roger, yeah. What they want is that, okay, you need to connect it like every 24 hours, like a chronic disease. You need to have your, <laughs> yeah. you need to, your console, it's got a chronic disease. It, it needs a fix of internet every 24 hours, or you mm. won't be able to play games. But wait, you can watch TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, yeah. it's... Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother to, um, I wouldn't even bother to pay the sixty-dollar game I just bought. You know, I watch TV instead and look at the game. Um, <laughs> Pretty clever, so yeah. But it's mad. So anyway, um, did either of you watch any E3 this week, either by live stream or have you seen anything on YouTube? Yes, just jump yes, yes. Well, um, yeah, you you watch it like this as it was happening. Um, yeah, live stream. Yes, I did watch yeah, it. I can't add. That... Yeah, I had no internet connection. So yesterday at night, I went to IGN and they have this uh, day one, day two, day three, but whatever, whatever, with a recap of everything that happened. So I watch it and they are like some nice stuff there, like the Metal Gear Solid 5. Which... Oh my God, that, that blew my mind. <sighs> so excited about that. Yeah, I'm, yeah and I, I think I made a post on Facebook saying that the Koji, um, Kojima is the... It's the only one. Yeah, uh, he, he sort of redeemed Konami. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, yeah, Metal Gear Solid is Konami's Mario. <laughs> well, like, it really um, is, if you think about it. They don't seem to treat any other franchise with as much respect as Metal Gear Solid. I think it's also because uh, Kojima is such a, like, a strong um, character. He's, he knows what he's yeah. doing. He knows what, what he wants to do. And he's not just There's someone a lot of that, influence. yeah, he kind of like, he doesn't like follow orders in a way that, okay, we're going to do this now. And they say, oh, okay, I will do it, boss. No, he like, no, I want Metal Gear to do this, this, this and that. And he, and he does it. <laughs> hmm. So did, did anything, did anything else, have, uh, anything game-wise stick out to you guys this week? Um, yes. Actually. Tell us, tell us, Christina, yeah. Um. I don't know if you've been watching the whole thing, but I do recall that there was a game, I think it was Ubisoft, it was revealed during Ubisoft's uh, press, press conference. Um, it was called The Division, supposedly an entirely new game, and from judging from the trailer, it seems to be some kind of post-apocalyptic game with a lot of, it, it's very, very huge open area, the graphics looked absolutely stunning. Um, and, the first person. Yeah, and I don't remember huh. if it was third or first person, actually. Was it just FMV or was it proper gameplay, Christina? Uh, no, there was some gameplay. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Uh, and there was like a, two people talking on a radio and they were going up, up against something. I think there were human enemies, but I'm not entirely sure if there's going to be, you know, some kind of zombies or monsters since they in the FMV they did mention that there had been some kind of a... Apocalypse, I guess. So it's possible that we might get to see both. Maybe it'll be something like Daisy. Ah, okay, interesting. Mm. So yeah, is yeah, that it... is that for PS4 or uh, is that for uh, the same consoles or this one? That that is PS4. PS4. Uh huh. PS4. Okay. Um, might be wrong. But... Talking on the subject of um, horror games in general, um, mm. there was the was it the Evil Within, Roger, that that was shown? Yeah, yeah, but oh, yes. there was no there was no no demo for the for the public was just like a gameplay for for the event and we see some of uh it was really short i think it was like two minutes yeah but it looks so right and i told you it looks a bit like uh silent hill 3 the color that they use and the rust and the, the blood it remind me a lot like but i got some concerns about uh evil within right now which is the there's obsession with this big guy with a chainsaw. Uh -huh. Oh dear God! They seem to be copying Capcom there. Yeah, and uh, well, in a way, it's uh, well, it's 
Mikami, Mikami did the uh, Resident Evil Four, yeah. Four, and he started with all this thing with a with a chainsaw. But it's the same thing with like uh, with the Silent Hill games now. It's, okay, enough of a big guy with a big cleaver, big hammer, big broom, big spatula, or whatever. Okay. Let's... <laughs> Yeah, big spatula, yeah, yeah. Big, oh my god, they need to implement that. Big it's the new death spatula. Yeah, and cook, you know. It's like slicing him in half, he touches you a burger, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's forgot a cake inside the oven and he feels guilty and he goes to Silent Hill and he takes <laughs> by muffins and brownies. <laughs> yeah, this huge guy with a spatula. <laughs> oh dear god. <laughs> And uh, the, other, yeah, the other world is consistent, is completely, com- you know, consisted of flour, you know. <laughs> the, the thing chasing, is flour cover. The chasing sequence was look, looked all right, and the guy, the, the chainsaw death was gory and, and nice, but that's I thought thing, it was a bit uh, overly generic, Roger, the chainsaw guy. I thought yeah. we could have thought of something a bit, bit more interesting there. Yeah, like a spatula. We already said that. But it was, inc- but it, it was incredibly gory, so um, it probably gives you a hint of what's to come. That's going to be an 18 game all over the place, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, but they, 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 they had a, like a really interesting monster though. It's the lady with the, with the four arms and covering blood. Uh-huh. That's for me. It's like a really, really nice monster. Um, I tell you, I will just tell you just quickly a couple of things that I saw that jumped out at me um, for either good reasons or bad reasons. Um, I don't know if it, uh, either of you familiar with the Thief series. Yes, uh, I yeah I know it by name. Never played it. Okay, um, Thief um, Thief has been um, the brand new reboot of Thief, I should say, has been in development by Montreal Studios, Ubisoft, mm-hmm. for about, getting on for about three or four years now, I think. And they finally got around to showing some gameplay at E3. It's just been, Ubisoft have really, really had um, the, the hood over this, for one of a better word. They, they haven't wanted to show anything up until E3. Um, they, showed some, they showed some footage at E3. It just looked to me exactly like Dishonored, Roger. Like, <laughs> um, and it's like, how, oh. <laughs> how much more dishonoured do you have to be? You know, I mean, I mean, they need to think of a word that means dishonoured. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so they don't get Mixed sued. between dishonoured and maybe a little bit Assassin's Creed, even. I don't know. I felt it was a little cliche. Yeah, yeah but, but you know, oh, that's God. that's the problem now with. Uh, and of course, all the thief fanboys are going completely. Is that? The longer they take to to finish the game, to develop a game, yeah, the easier it, it gets outdated. Exactly, Roger. Yeah. Graphic wise and gameplay. So you got the the problem now is if they do it too fast, game full of bugs, they need more time. Yeah. If it take too long, it get outdated. Graph in graphics and in gameplay and maybe yes. you know. Yeah, I mean this to me it just you know stung of Dishonored, you know, I mean, I love Dishonored, right, but, you know, yeah, I don't really yeah. want to play Dishonored again under a different name with, you know, with a company that just basically doesn't have any ideas of their own what to do with a new franchise, um, or well, an old let, franchise, I should say. Let me just say one thing. Uh-huh. I'm having a huge slice of cheesecake right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, folks, this is Good last... Good thing the thief isn't there to steal it. Folks, this Sorry. is last frame, the foodie edition. Okay, if you're not, if you know, go away now. If you're not interested in horror games, this is the foodie edition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, but yes, I didn't. I don't know about the this the the thief game that they showed at three. I I missed that, but yeah, I agree that because Dishonor it was like really clever because you can tell oh they played a lot of Bioshock or they play a lot of this and you know, the, the early games of the Thief games. But that's the thing. Now, when they release the game, people will always say the same thing. Oh, it looks like Dishonored. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it plays like Dishonored. Okay, so a um, couple, couple of other games that I saw that jumped out at me. Um, maybe you've got something to say about this one, Christina, um, which is um, Ubisoft's Watchdog. Um, now, um, I saw quite a lengthy demo today. Um, and it looks like, to be honest, it looks like Assassin's Creed within, you know, a modern technical world, um, even down to the same sort of similar interface. Have you seen anything about this? 
Uh, honestly, I haven't been watching that, but just from how you're describing it, it, it sounds a little bit like Remember Me. Yeah, again, Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Remember Me is another one that's sort of like, um, I was hyped for Remember Me when they announced it. They but should... it, got, it got like really bad reviews, didn't it? Yeah, it got some really bad reviews and, you know, I'm, I'm glad I saved myself 40 quid there. <laughs> um, but you, sometimes you just have to trust your gut with the game or even trust IGM which I don't know, works. people are saying different things about it, some people are really liking it maybe but it's maybe it's maybe it's one of those games that's sort of you know, chalk and cheese maybe it does split the fan base you know, who knows yeah, yeah, just like DMC did <laughs> to, me, to me it just seems like there's an overemphasis on button bashing you know, I can't you know, I mean, there might be some exploration and some platforming, but the combat just seems to be, you know, how how fast can you hit X? <laughs> um, mm. You know, I mean, you know, I'll go out and buy one of those speed controllers and I can hit X Your all day. Your hands get good workout, at least. I can go and hit X all day with a speed controller. <laughs> um, okay, anything else either one of you want to say about E3? Anything else that jumped out at you? Mm, not really. I just want to recap real quick. Um, or not recap, but I want to say one final thing about E3. Uh, there was definitely some gems there, and I also want to mention real quick that, you know, since I keep track of Resident Evil, uh, there was something mentioned about Resident Evil for PS4. <laughs> yeah, so I that. you should expect an announcement pretty soon. They didn't say anything, but, you know. Uh, but overall, I gotta say, I'm not too, I guess, impressed by E3, as bad as it sounds. I don't know, I'm... I'm I'm one of those people that has the opinion that I still think next gen is a little bit too soon, and I'm not going to be getting a PS4 anytime soon. Okay, so yeah. So, oh, yeah. Although, although it's like much more cheaper than the Xbox was. Well, yeah, yeah, true. 100, 100 <laughs> quid at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big difference. Okay, so just one final thing before we wrap this little segment up. Uh, but... let, me just, let me just talk about one thing. Go on then. Dead Rising 3. Oh, oh that's <sighs> Forgot that. What, yeah, what, what, it looked what, nice. Call of Zombie Duty, whatever. Yeah, Call of, so, call of oh, the Duty. Oh, yeah. That's just... And, all yeah. that was gone, all that classic Dead Rising charm. I don't know. I see a lot of people liking it, but I can see a lot of people starting to hate it, too. What a Capcom, honestly. Well, I, I watch... I, I start... I watch the video, and there's some stuff that I like. It's, it looks nice. The... The do your own weapon, it's much better than in the second game. Mm. Which I missed. Which is <laughs> like, uh, they say, oh, you can, you know, use a tape and put this, this, and that. But you can do it on spots. You need to find a workplace or whatever they call. Carry everything there and then do it there. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, that's... That's a brilliant. So that so that's a good thing. You do that on spot. The guy yeah, gets Roger, Roger, you, you've just brought up a very interesting point, which I'm going to come back to later on when we talk to, when we talk about the Last of Us, okay? But right. we really do need to jump on because time's ahead of us. Yeah. Just, okay. Just, okay. Just, just one last thing, super quick. Xbox One or PS4? PS4, no PS4. doubt. When I get the money, PS4. Okay, good. PS4. We're sorted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. Um, do you want to lead us on to the next subject, Christina? Uh, yes, which I believe was State of Decay, right? Oh. <laughs> Yay. My game is on pause right now. <laughs> tell, us I, about, I... Tell, us, tell us about your experiences, then. Either uh, one. Mine. Yes. Mine? Yes, yes, go ahead. Well, well, I love zombies, so oh. I, give, I give it a try to end the zombie game. There are some that like, really nice, and there are some that just promise you, but they don't deliver. And State of Decay is this gem that they can just add DLC and add more stuff. And I think that I, I told uh, Dave that maybe the future of horror gaming is... Independent download. Yeah, and, and uh, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, which because it's cheaper. And I think they have like uh, 30 guys... Guys and girls working on the game, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, they, it's a very Undead Labs isn't really big, so it's a very limited. It's a very limited team. Um, and for what they, for what for, for with like thirty people, they, it's an amazing. I role. just, I, I just think it's a, an astonishing achievement. I can't believe actually, because 
you just got there's a lot of art there. There's a lot. It's a very deep world as well. I mean, yeah. as you get into it, you know, you can see. I mean, you are basically restricted to the one central hub, which is the church. Okay, and you can build your community, and it uses the same mechanics as Dead Rising did. You know, whereas you know you've got the security room in Dead Rising, didn't you? Yeah. Where you could bring survivors back. Now. But it's job. not. But it's not always secure forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you need to do some, you know, fix some boards and do some stuff. Or they will get yeah, it. Yeah, you, so you can't just have one base. You need to move on. You have yeah, to yeah, I mean, fortify, fortify somewhere else, and it's never quite safe. What it does yeah. is, what it does is, it encourages you to immerse yourself in this incredibly rich, deep world, and you find yourself going out looking for hinges and brackets so that you can make a watchtower so someone can yeah. snipe the zombies mm. or you go out looking for other resources so that you can make a garden so you can you know so you can have a more stable living with supplies medicine yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's incredibly deep and what i like about it a lot that i didn't like about dead rising is that the people who you survive are who you rescue aren't completely useless um, yeah how many, how, oh, yeah. how many survivors did you lose trying to escort them back to the security room with Dead Rising? Countless of them. Um, I think I, I don't think so far in like 20 hours of playing the game I've lost one survivor because you know, the AI is capable. Yeah, but also they apparently have, um, they have personalities. You know, there's maybe someone that used to be an alcoholic. There's maybe someone yeah. who's be in medicine so they all like, have different like skills the, so even if someone is useless they are good for something else i like that i like that uh, oh someone is is uh, feeling sad and you go and take someone somewhere to kill some zombies and talk about it yeah nothing nothing that's <laughs> therapy ever. Yeah, therapy right there okay let's kill some zombies the old-fashioned way and then you feel better <laughs> You know, you know, you just you just turn up to your doctors one morning. You say, "Doctor, I'm depressed," right? And the doctor says, "Oh, well, just go and kill a few undead. Yeah. You know, you'll be fine." Yeah. Skulls <laughs> open. Let's see what happens. Yeah, but the other here's uh, a crowbar. You know, off yeah. you go. <laughs> one, one, the other thing that I want to point, um, it's really nice that you think twice uh, before using a gun. Yes. Because that will yes. attract more zombies. And uh, you really are afraid to go scavenging at night. Yeah, no, you know, here, yeah, and, and, awesome. here's the thing, Roger, right? Like, it's not, you think, mm, maybe it's not a good idea to go at night. Maybe I'll wait till get daytime. It's, but yeah. they need food. They need supply. What should I do? I yeah. can use the car because I will attract them. Yeah, what yeah. you've got is, is what you've got is you've got this day-night cycle, which is basically like, you know, one hour to a, another hour. So a, yeah. an hour of daytime, an hour of nighttime. Um, and like you say, going scavenging at night time isn't probably the best idea. Uh, <laughs> um, I can tell you what I've really found. I've really felt moments of sheer panic, where you turn a corner and there's a herd of about you know twenty, thirty zombies, and they yeah. literally run at you like sprinters. Yeah. And you're in a mad panic to try and find a vehicle. I mean, yeah. I'm not crazy well, on vehicles in cars, but I love them in this. I just want to get yeah. them out. And there's, there's not many really of them, apparently. The nice touch of fashion a zombie with a car door. Like, bam. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Get off. Get, <laughs> get off. Get, get off, off my motor. But... <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Amazing. But, Dave, uh, you you play like what? Like you said, 70 an hour, 7 minutes, 70 minutes. An hour you played off, uh, or you play more than... The dead already. Well, when I first, when I first, when I first got the game, when I first got the demo, it let me play for seventy minutes. Uh, oh, you don't have the full game. I yeah. do, yes, I do. Oh, yeah, okay. it does. <laughs> um, I got, I got, and then Christina very kindly treated me because I'm nice. I think. <laughs> you are. <laughs> um, so I got, I got the full game, and then I literally played for like what fourteen hours. Oh yeah, you were just talking about that. You're like constantly playing. I just played for fourteen hours straight because I just wanted to see what happened. The thing is, it's so damn addictive. Yeah, mm. I, I, I I played from what six o'clock, seven o'clock, seven p.m. yesterday till. 
4 a.m. Well, there you go. That tells you. That just tells you everything you know, need to know. You know, if anyone's undecided about this game and you love zombies and you love an open world, it's a must. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a it's an absolute must. Hmm. And, uh, and I mean, these smaller companies like Undead Labs, they they seem to have something that these bigger companies have lost in terms of zombie games. I don't know. They've just lost the touch. The bigger well, companies. I think, I think it's also like the expectation and sales and everything. Oh, it's a Capcom game. Oh, yeah, they have game. to perform to a certain oh, audience, it's... sell a certain amount of copies. The smaller companies don't really have that pressure. Yeah, you're right about that. It's like it's like if you have a if you have a band and people don't know you that well, you can do your your new album, you know, chill and do it instead of oh, it's the next Radiohead album. Oh, it's the next, you know, whatever. Album. In other words, in other words, what you're saying, Roger, is there's there's probably less pressure and more freedom yeah. to be a defendant. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's not graphically perfect. It's got some primary issues, but I don't care. It's damn <laughs> yeah, good. It does it. have clipping. It does have some issues, you yeah. know, but, but that's, okay. it's fine. But it's, but it's a good thing. It's something that they can, and they probably will, fix with uh, with uh, patches. Uh, yes, I think there is supposed to be, if it, if there isn't, already hasn't been, I think there's supposed to be, like, a patch that was supposed to be this weekend. Um, Five years. And, yeah, and something else. Uh, they will apparently release co-op real soon. Wow. Now, I just, oh. just, 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 just say this real quick. We're going to um, be all over that, aren't we, Roger? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, see you and Christina. <laughs> yes, hell yeah. It's going to be like Zombieland. Yeah, hell yeah. But I just have to say, um, real quick, uh, State of the K is supposed to be a part of a bigger project that Undead Labs are working on. They are actually working on a much bigger sandbox MMO that is apparently supposed to come out for the next-gen consoles. Uh-huh. So State of Decay is basically just an experiment game. They want to see what people like, what they don't like. Oh, I cannot wait to see what those guys yeah. do with bigger resources. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, up until this point, a console MMO hasn't really been possible, but the next-gen will definitely be. Yeah, makes it, yeah it's going to open a lot of doors, isn't it, mm-hmm. for that? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of co-op. I've, you know, I've said it in the past, but a game oh. like... You know, a game like this, it's just... A game like Star Trek, I would jump in any time. I mean, you have your friends, they, they they have your back. It's just very realistic. Yeah. Since the game is realistic, the co-op will also be. You know? Yeah, you just yeah. you just, you just just want to jump in and lose yourself. Simple and as all that. The other thing is that they, they just did what the Walking Dead game was. I mean, the first person shooter one. Mm. They, they did what that game was uh, not supposed to be. Yeah, they they are what they survival instinct. Game. I don't know. Yeah, it's I mean, good in some ways, but yeah, I you know I I I, I watch some videos and it's just a regular first person shooter with zombies like pet, mm-hmm. not even Dead Island pet, which I like Dead Island for what it is. <laughs> I like it. I have great fun with that island. Mm. But you know they did it because it's Walking Dead, it's famous show, whatever, whatever. But there's no emotional psychological whatever in the game yeah yeah it's just bad and the zombies are really really dumb okay zombies are dumb but they are the dumbest zombies i i think i honestly think that with state of decay daisy might have competition finally like when the mmo version comes out I got, yeah. I got tired of Dead Island very quickly, Roger. I played it for a couple of hours. But... I, I understand, but once you get to the town, to the shanty town, it gets more interesting. When you, the island, yeah, it drags a little bit. But once you get to the, to the town, it's, uh, it gets better. At least for me. Mm-hmm. At least for me. So how many hours into that game? How how many hours is it before you reach roughly the town, Roger? Because I seem to be wa- I seem to be wandering around the beach for an eternity. I well I maybe I you just did, like beaches. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> did. I start. I did the main. I like to do the main missions in kind of sandbox games. I mean, so, I, so then I can have like the freedom to go around. I mean, Roger, you know, if I was going to spend a day at the beach and I've been told, I would have bought my, you know, you know, I would have, sunscreen. I would have taken my bucket and spade and my sunscreen, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, of course, my spatula for zapping the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was around three, four hours, or two and a half. It, because I walk around, I like, I'm like you, I like to see yes, everything. there and there yeah. and everything. So it took me more than if someone goes straight to the point and 
and try to reach the town. Okay, so just 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 one just one final thing then on state of decay. Um, if you could you could give it. I know it's a bit difficult for you, Christina, because you're only at the very um, start of the game. Yeah, I haven't had time to play much because I have so much other stuff to do. But if I could rate it, yeah, exactly. So far, honestly, a solid nine out of ten. Maybe eight point five. Maybe I'm being a little too generous, but no, eight for sort of eight point five, nine ish out of ten. What would you say, Roger? The same. Eight what point nine. nine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would give because it, because would all give the issues nine. because all the issues that I may have with the game is something that they can patch. Yes, absolutely. I it's would, not something. I would say without a doubt that. Um, State of Decay is the game that Dead Rising should have been and could have been. Yeah. Right. If you State of Decay is what so many zombie games should have and could have been. I mean, if you took away the comedic element, I mean, everybody likes the comedic elements of Dead Rising. I mean, I love you know. There's nothing. There's nothing I enjoy better than shoving a shower head into a into a zombie's yeah. head and watching yeah. the fountain. Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> putting buckets on their heads and letting them wander. Yeah, I am. I am there. And traffic cones. You know, traffic cones <laughs> and zombies. That's two things that belong together. <laughs> yeah. Right. Traffic cones and zombies. I'm there. Right. Yes. But if you're talking about a serious zombie survival game, right? You know, State of the Decay is. You know, it's there. It's top of the list. Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, okay. I think we're done on that one. Yes. So what's next? Next is, I believe, the short segment on found footage movies. Okay, so. Aha! Right. Okay. Right. As we all know, um, last week, or just yeah, last week, um, the found footage movie VHS two was released. Um, I know you saw that already, Roger. Um, yeah. I was just wondering what you guys think, and just let me talk for a second here, um, what you guys think the fascination is with the found footage genre, because it strikes me as one of the longest running film genres in the history of cinema. It's, it's run practically concurrently since, almost since, go back to the 80s, because something like Cannibal Holocaust, I think, or something like that, was technically the first found footage movie. Yeah. What do you think the fascination is with watching these things? Do you think it's because it's from the first-person perspective a lot of the time, that you're seeing, the, you're seeing events unfolding on the screen from the person filming? I, yeah. I, I think so, yeah. But and I also, also think... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. One at a time, please. <laughs> uh, uh, Otherwise, we should hit you with a spatula. Like, a personal, <laughs> <laughs> like personal experience for me, is there like um, that's the thing you said? Because in the other movies, you you watching someone uh, going through that situations, mm -hmm. but in this kind of found footage, you are it's like a playing the game in a way. Yes. You are the person there having to deal with the. Uh, I mean, way. Roger, yes. if you oh. look at something like Wreck, Roger, right, Wreck, the first one especially, I mean, can you imagine the potential for that for a video game? Yeah. I mean, just just literally just the way that the camera moves and... You watch, and, you watch the second one. Yes, I've seen, yeah, I've yeah, seen both of them, right? And third, one, the third, third one, is, third one is, is horrible, but, well, they can't, they can't uh, erase the first and the second, the masterpieces. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so um, I'm just but interested. There, but there was there was a game that was in a kind of found footage. Uh, CJ was playing it. It was like a, a guy with a camera in an asylum. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah, that's the name yeah. of the. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely right. That's a good point, Roger. Yeah, I don't know about it. What happened with it? When we're gonna get it? I think it's only it's for PC only. Okay, so what I'm interested in from you guys is. Any found footage movies that uh, that you'd say head and shoulders above the rest, and also ones which you think are below par, if you have any. Hmm. Hum. That's um, a tricky one. Okay. I mean, <laughs> why you why you why you chew that over? Um, I could tell you a few that I think are exceptional. Um, I would. You know, I'd echo what Roger said there with Wreck. Um, I would also say Neroy, The Curse, 
um, the power keeps. No, right, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. The power keeps like ski it. tapes. Um, I'm not going to say Blair Witch. <laughs> oh God, that, no, that's too. <laughs> I'm not. I'm certainly not going to say Blair Witch. I like some stuff from Blair Witch. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, all the standing in the corner at the end because you've been a naughty boy. That's quite. That's quite. You know, I like. I like. That's, that's me. You know when they being attacked, by the like they 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 hear some children. Yes. Particularly in the woods, mm -hmm. and they get like a uh, attacked while they're inside the tent. Uh huh. Yeah, right. And then she start. They start running, and she looks, and she says, "Oh my God, what is that? What is that?" In my mind, I don't know. If, yeah, in my mind, it's that big furry baby, two head baby from Silent Hill Four. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, but in my mind, that's what she sees. She sees the. the Twins or whatever they call, <laughs> and that would be Holding enough. Holding a to, spatula in each hand. That would be enough to shit myself <laughs> thing in a forest because. Yeah, that, 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 Roger, me too. I'd be um, the, the, the forest would be a damn sight browner and darker after that. I'm just <laughs> that, that scared the shit on me when I first seen something. Um, okay, so anyway, um, have have do either of you have um. A, f a favorite found footage movie, or are you sort of like um, nonplussed, or do you really like them, or what? I, I I can like them. The thing with uh, these movies like that is they they definitely make it so that you can identify more with the character. You know, with it being first person, you just feel like you're more there. Uh, I also think maybe they are considered a little bit more realistic. You know, since it's like oh, you know, found footage. Maybe it yeah. feels more real and more, thus more scary to people. But um, as for me, I was never a huge fan of them. <laughs> but what? if I have to pick, I would say Wreck, the first one, because I did like that one. I saw it. And also Norway. I definitely, I've definitely seen that. It was a while ago, but I remember it. And you, Roger? I don't know this Neuroy movie. Is that oh, what watch it, Roger. About? Roger, you it's, trust, uh, you trust yeah, me, Roger, don't just... you? Yeah, I trust you. Watch it. Watch <laughs> I it. trust you. Watch it. Um... I hate and cannibal holocaust. <laughs> my heart. I hate that movie. I hate that movie. Spatula holocaust coming yes, to you soon. Yeah, spatula. Well, I hate that movie. <laughs> because there's there's a scene that they are killing an animal. Oh God, don't Roger, don't. And I hate that. I think that was so pointless. Don't. Mm. I couldn't even look at it, Roger. That was just yeah. too much. I just couldn't look. Mm. Um. Yeah, that's it. I think that's a that, that's a low point in movie history. Um, why do you think? Just one last thing on this subject, okay? Why do you think the found footage movies are a produced so often? Do you think it's because they're cheap? And secondly, why do you think it's endured? You know, because I mean, um, I went. I just went into my local video shop just recently, right? Because I, I wanted to do a little bit of background for this, and mm. I counted something like seventy movies, right? And oh. A, a majority of them, I'd yeah. say 30, 40% I haven't seen. And that's a lot for me because um, I try to keep up. Um, and just basically the same formula, you know, we go into hidden, you know, you know, crew visits an asylum, crew visits a telephone box, crew visits wherever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's haunted shoebox, you know. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, any, anything, any, anywhere where, you, where we can stick a camera, you know, we'll have a film, you know. Um, <laughs> what do you think, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I think that when we started, it started really strong, like, um, two days, two days ago. Oh, sorry. It started really strong around, like, two years ago or three years ago. Right? Really strong again. I mean, I, I think it's because of uh, YouTube and... Uh, they think that everybody got a video camera with nice quality in their smartphones. Yeah. And now it's kind of resonates more. So you're saying people. so so what you're saying is you're saying because, you know, high helps, high, high, high end digital equipment is available now and it's pretty easy for anyone to sort of get on board and And it, it helps the immersion thing that oh, that uh, happened really, oh that's true, you know? Because it looks like a video that you could make with your cell phone. Hmm. Kind of feel a bit part of it. You know? Yeah, and, uh, I, I sad, but I I also think that, like you said, with the whole YouTube thing, and it's just become something a little bit of a pop cultural trend, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I mean, 
I just can't, I can't see any end to it though. It's just, I mean, I love found footage movies as much as anyone else, but I just cannot see an end to it. It just seems to be like a constant stream now. Um, I mean, Hollywood have, Hollywood have even had a few goes at it with things like, you know, Cloverfield, you know, albeit at, at a much, a much larger scale. Um, yeah. but you know, there just seems to be a massive, massive amount of sort of independently produced found footage movies. Um, mm. and it's just something I just can't see an end to. Um, it would be nice if it could sort of slow down a lot of it. I mean, I am a big fan of things like, you know, the first two VHS movies, because I think there's a lot of imagination in them. Um, yeah. but just, you know, how many yeah, more... It lots... just, just feels like a, an 80s movie. I mean, how many more yeah, exactly. asylums can we how, can we explore? You know, um, yeah. how many haunted graveyards can we go around? And um, I, th- I just probably just think it's about time for a rest on them. We're gonna have to find another, another um, genre, I guess, like haunted kitchens with like flying spatulas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Haunt, haunted cheesecakes. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, so um, now we come on to. Um, Silent Hill 8, The Restless Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> now we come on to, I believe, Christina, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we come uh-huh. on to, um, what are we currently playing? So yes. Do you want to yes. go, do you want to go first, Christina? You've been a little yes, bit quiet. Um, yeah, I have, um, we, we're going to talk a little bit about that as usual. Um, I haven't really been playing all that much new stuff. Uh, I just want to say real quick before I mention uh, what I have been playing, um, I have recently, God, I say I'm a lot. <laughs> I recently gotten involved with Rely on Horror. Uh, I have actually started writing news articles uh, for Whoa. them. And help, really? Yeah, and helping out. And, hi, uh, hi, Roger. Yeah. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi, hi. Uh, and uh, I- I'm just really excited to be working with them. You know, it- it's all still new, and but I-, I feel like I'm getting a hold of things. So yeah. if anyone from Rely on Horror is listening, thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. I and if anyone is not following Rely on Horror, please be sure to do so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a lot of opportunities open to me now. You know, I've always wanted to get involved with the gaming industry a bit more seriously. I mean, maybe I'll even be able to go to like conventions and maybe cover some news. That would be amazing. Well, here's the thing, Christina. <clears throat> if you can make your way over to Eurogamer, um, mm. you know that you'll have at least yes. two companions because me and yes. Andrew would be there yes. the shop. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to do my best. I really am. That would be that would be phenomenal. Okay, so just um, just walk me through then what you're playing at the moment, Christina. Uh, same stuff as usual because it takes me a while to get through games for some reason. You know, capping, recording, rendering, uh, revelations as usual, DMC. You know, the same old. But I'm also, I, I've also finished Tomb Raider. I actually finished that yesterday. I play that off screen. Uh, the reason to why it took me so long is because I've been doing like 100% completion, you know, all GPS catches, all relics, all documents, everything, all uh, challenges. So I finally have that done, you know. Yeah, that, that sounds like a game with an absolute crap ton of um, content and reason to backtrack. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We yeah. talked about that last episode. Roger can fill me in here. Yeah, yeah. I, I finished, uh, but not uh, 100%, because I was uh, rushing to buy a shock. It's mm. just uh, the last one we done play, which is gorgeous, and it's mm. awesome. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, I plan to get back to, to the game to finish a 100% and get in everything. I like the, I really like the, the game. There's some set pieces of you know burning houses running and like yeah really really nice it looks gorgeous i have to say okay yeah no it is and uh for the first time i I could relate with lara as a as a as a character absolutely not as a a, like this cocky a big boobed lady (laughs) absolutely uh, i didn't like the didn't like it because she wasn't a she wasn't a strong uh, uh, female character. She was she was she was made for for boys for teenage boys. Mm. Exactly, yeah. You no, know? and I felt it was a bit like uh, offensive to women, to be honest. And uh, but now she's redeemed for me. She's she's a character that I like, and I yeah, I can yeah. wait for the next game. It's hinted at the end of the at the end. Yeah, of the because game. she's like. No, uh, no, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. In case anyone hasn't completed yeah, yeah. it, which Dave hasn't. <laughs> oh, and, no, uh, yeah, I really like it. 
and the way that you got the guns and uh, you do the up the updates and you can okay I'm gonna use what this and that and uh. I just uh, for me the bow is the primary weapon and I I had some of the machine guns just in case of things get too hectic <laughs> because it, it it does get hectic. <laughs> Just, uh, just one question, guys, with this because um, it's one game that I'm yet to pick up. Um, what is the what is the emphasis on what is the emphasis on combat here? Is combat encouraged, or are you encouraged to be stealthy? Uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to fight no matter what because yeah. you get caught. Sometimes you can sneak through, uh, but ultimately you want to kill as many people as possible because you do get salvage from them. Uh, you do get gun parts, you know, you get yeah. supplies for killing them, basically. Ah, uh, okay. So and plus, if you kill them, you can, you know, freely collect all the items in the area. You don't have to worry about being spotted, so... Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I always go with a silent, uh, you know, arrow shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, I just don't I just don't particularly like it when a developer just says, you know, you have you have to play this way. You can play this way if you want to, but we're going to penalise you for it. Mm -hmm. um, so choice is nice, you know. If you can be stealthy, you can be combatty. Yeah. That's fine. As as she said, there are moments that you really have to fight and go guns blazing, but mm -hmm. they are very few. And yeah. It's just yeah, it happens, but it's not like a. And she's like, "Oh, you bastards! I'm gonna take yeah. you down!" You know, so you really get like a kick out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it is, after a while, uh, she's really charming. Fun. She's really grown on me. She's yeah. such a sweetheart. So just quickly, because the clock is against us today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, let Let me just say one thing about this: the counter attacks. Uh, they were one of the coolest that I saw in a video game. Oh really? Yeah, because oh, you you start updating her skills. You start updating her skills. And uh, if you shoot a guy in the, in the knee, and he, you can do a counterattack and kill him with one blow. Oh wow! And you can use the it's the pickaxe, right? Oh nice. Pickaxe. Yeah, yeah, that's and right. And an arrow, it, and you can choose what kind of. Yeah, if, if basically you use different whatever, weapons. It will be yeah, different. whatever gun or weapon you have out at the time. Um, that changes how you do the the finishing. Okay, well, so it's like a contextual finisher. finisher, you mean? Yeah. On what weapon yeah. you've got? Oh, nice. Exactly. Okay, that's it's not just the same generic animation no. over and over. That's nope. that's nice. Okay, so just just quickly, um, what else are the two of you playing? Um, but... uh, nothing. I'm done. I'm done for me. <laughs> and you, Roger, you're just on Bioshock Infinite. Well, yes? Bioshock is on hold for now <laughs> because I want to play. <laughs> State of Decay. State of Decay. That's yeah. right. My okay, so, people, my people, they need me. They need food. They need. They need food. They need they spatulas, need for a They day, need they? me. <laughs> there's, there's a spatula apocalypse. You better get out there on your ass and look for something. Oh dear God! If we don't name something about this podcast episode with spatula, then I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's the spatula episode. Spatula, the food <laughs> edition. Um, okay, so um, just just quickly to wrap this up, because like I said, the clock is against us. Mm. Um, would you give a score to Tomb Raider, the two of you? Nine, I, nine point five. I, I feel like a little too generous today, but yeah, I have to give it that. Oh, nice, uni yeah. universal praise for this. That's worthy of a trumpet. No, <laughs> I, I, I like, I like it. <laughs> it's a good game, and it was a labor of love. You can see at the end when the credits roll, they post pictures of the guys. Yeah, that the, the developers. The game, yeah. And they say thank you very much for playing the game, and it, you you feel that they really enjoy doing that. Yeah, that's something, something, something I never noticed. Where actually they're like, thank you for taking the time to play this game. We hope you had a good time. You know, I've never, I don't remember yeah, seeing. It. Usually don't, don't, don't see that. I think Silent Hill Downpour got that, but few games got that in the end. Mm -hmm. And you feel that they, they, they did it not just oh let's do another Tomb Raider game. No, they, mm -hmm. they did it like let's do something really nice. Mm -hmm. Always, always a nice touch at the end. Okay, yeah. so talking of endings and talking of things being last. Okay, we are now on to um, the Last of Us. Yes. Um, which is the last no, thing in it. Only you. Now we have talked. <laughs> the last yes. of the last of us. This is the. This is. The, now this is the thing that I've been. I've been pretty much waiting for since I saw. I don't know a five minute clip of gameplay or something. Um, and as you both know, it launched on um, Universal release as well on Friday. Yes. Um, now I know about the game and I played the game. And I think it's basically, um, well, it's the game that defines this generation, in my opinion. Um, it's head and shoulders above anything else. 
It's amazing. It's in, absolutely in, you know, beautiful. You know, the, the Edge magazine, they give yep. you the perfect 10. It's, it's worth it. It's, it's gotten a and, lot and of that, And that magazine, they like really, really harsh. Reviews. Yes, yeah. It's it's a, Roger, what it is, it's not just a video game. It's a piece of interactive art. And I don't, I don't mean that in this sort of heavy rain way either, where... Um, mm. I mean, even though heavy rain is considered by by many, is it? You know, I mean, that's that's going to be another game that people people are going to look back at in the years' time and say, you know, what a phenomenal what a phenomenal piece of work it was. Um, with Last of Us, you've got that control has been given back to you that wasn't in heavy rain a lot of the time. Uh. I mean, you've got button prompts. Um, mm-hmm. Last of Us is that good. I'm saying it is that good and. Um, the emotional impact of that game within the first 15 minutes will stay with you for the rest of the game. Oh. I I only watched a few cutscenes like just at the real start because I, I actually pure, pre-ordered the PlayStation 3 special edition of The Last of Us. Whoa! Uh, and, yeah, and which, I'll be doing some boxing video of that. So yeah, I finally cracked, you know, for The Last of Us. That was like a, that was it, you know, I'm getting a PlayStation 3. Yeah, I, I was. Um, that is funny you mentioned because I saw a game yesterday and they had it and it for well. If I when I get a PS3, I get this edition. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. I should go for it. Yeah, because I would buy. A, I, I would get a, a PS3 especially for Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. a few, just a few words about the environments and absolutely the crafting system, which is what we we were talking about earlier. Do you remember you were talking about Dead Rising earlier, Roger? Yeah. You said you had to find a a, a bench to do your crafting. Yeah. So if you wanted to sort of like make anything, um, the ingenious thing about Last of Us is that your character Joel has this backpack, and you can craft in real time. So if you need a shiv or a med pack, you know, mm-hmm. you can literally just craft in real time. I like that. Um, the downside to that is, you know, these zombies they're not going to sit there and fold their arm and f- fold their arms and read the paper while you do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, come on. I'm hurry up. Nice. I need to kill you. I need to kill you. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Excuse me, you know, just have this piece of Uh just to ask a question, does the single player have co op? Or not the single player, the the campaign. No, it is totally oh, okay. totally a single player component. Okay. But, but you, there is multiplayer, I know yeah, that. You've got a multiplayer, right? Um, for me, the single player is where it's all at because Absolutely. you are going to be terrified of this game. I'm not going to be just terrified. I think I'm going to cry my way through the game. These games just really touch me on a deep level because, Roger, you know, you identify. Roger, there's creatures, okay, in this game that are called clickers, okay? And I haven't been so terrified of anything since Shibito. Ah. ah right? These, that sounds good. These are monsters, Roger, right? You do not want to mess with these guys, right? Like you, you. If I mean, talk about creeping around on eggshells, and I could, I could, I could hear my heart in my chest, in my head. <laughs> oh my god, that is wow. I was. I remember a game that has done that. To I have me been, a long time. I've been playing video games for a long time, and I don't think I've recalled having such panic. You know, just trying to get through a very small area but where you may have three or four of these clickers walking around and they operate like bats. They're they're blind. I mean they're ah, human. Sound. they are they're can they're completely upright and humanoid, but they've been completely taken over by this um by this by this parasitical thing. Oh um, spoilers. <laughs> well oh, well it's not <laughs> that's in any spoilers. That's in any naughty dog press release, Rod. <laughs> I didn't read it. Sue them. You know. I blocked myself. I blocked myself to any kind of video after Sue the them. first trailer, yeah. the first gameplay last year. Um, I just blocked myself. I, I decided to do that with with the games that I'm interested. In. Okay. Yeah, I I was just gonna say earlier when I started talking about the special edition. Um, I I watched a few cutscenes, but that's it. I remembered. Oh, oh my god, I can't watch anymore. Yeah. That's what a game, a good game like that does to me. I just can't. I literally can't watch anymore. It's a game, Roger. Once once you boot it up, you're gonna kiss your weekend goodbye because you're just not gonna want to turn the thing off. And it's a long game as well. I've been playing for about. Six seven hours now, and I'm I'm at about forty percent. Oh, okay. Um, so it's gonna Sorry. be it's gonna be you know a fifteen sixteen hour game, and I'm exploring absolutely everywhere. Mm-hmm. 
but it's absolutely gorgeous. In, in fact, um, I had a family member here recently, and um, it was on the screen for for the first few minutes, and they they couldn't believe it was a video game. They were stu- <laughs> they were sat away back from the screen, and they just turned around and said, "Is that really a video game?" Because the character, yeah. the way the characters move, they've got real weight, um, and the combat's got real weight as well. Just wait till you hit something over their head with a crowbar. <laughs> oh. um, astonishing game, um, and worthy of buying a PS3 for um, in, yep. in of itself. Worth every. As is evident by what I did, just saying. Yeah, you just did it. Yeah. Okay, folks. So um, yes. Let's I wrap think it up, that's going to be that's going to be a lot for this episode of last. Yeah. Week. So yeah, my plans now is I'm gonna play State of Decay until until I you save you're everybody busy. until I save everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just now in this this really long road trip to find a new home. You are in you're in the spatula zone, Roger. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I am. And okay. uh, the map is much more bigger than that, the central hub. I thought it was just that small town. Oh, it's but massive. You, you go to the road and you just go and it's lucky far away where I'm going. And it's I'm just very excited to get there. <laughs> okay, so Roger, okay, so this is me, Dave, two back, signing off. Um, thanks very much for listening. Um, we hope to be back again next month. Indeed. Indeed. This is Roger Gomez from Nowhere with a Spatula. This is Christina Marquez from all over YouTube. <laughs> no, but um, where is your spatula? Thank you so much, guys, for listening, and we'll be back next time. Hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.